happening welcome back to another video here on natural blocks so um today let me just give you a bit of backstory to this video uh, a little while ago uh, merlin entertainment who own some of the biggest attractions here in the uk including london dungeons Alton towers chesington legoland and fort park most of them we've covered on this channel before recently they released uh, a plan um, called COVID-19 protecting our guests and employees so pretty much uh, their plan for when they're allowed to reopen uh, before we go further into this I just want to say I am going to be giving my opinions on this my opinions may be different to yours but it is about nine pages uh, this document is nine pages uh, if I just show my screen look there's the plan okay, so Let's kick straight in. So, firstly, I'm going to read this out. Uh, this is what is at the start of the plan. At Merlin Entertainment, our mission is to create and truly is to create truly memorable experiences and place the utmost importance on the safety and well-being of our guests and employees. We have introduced a new a range of new health and safety measures that seek to reduce the risk associated with the presence of COVID-19 that are in line with the government advice and requirements of local health authorities. Some of the measures set out below may be clearly visible to you from the moment you arrive at one of our attractions and others require consideration from, from guests to help ensure everyone has, has a magical visit. So the first thing to take from that is they are going to make it clear to you as soon as you arrive at an attraction, whether that is the dungeons, whether that is one of their things. So the first section on here is before you arrive. Okay, so here we go. So before you arrive, this is what they've set out as a plan. Please make sure you have made your booking online where possible. Right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read out what here and then I'll give my opinion. So first off is please make sure you have made your booking online where possible. Before leaving, please check our social media platforms and website for the latest information. Be ready to make on-site payments using a contactless bank card rather than cash where possible. If recommended or required by local health authorities, please bring a suitable face mask and covering. Where necessary, face masks will also be available at our attraction should you require one. We politely request that you refrain from visiting our attraction should you just start displaying any symptoms associated with COVID. Please contact guest services should you need to remind you. Okay, so we're going to start off by talking about make sure you uh, have made your booking online. I personally think, and a lot of people I've seen who have done videos on this, I personally I think we're going to see uh, on the day ticket sales stopping, I presume. Yeah, that's what I think. I think we're going to see a lot of ticket turnstiles at attractions such as Alton Towers, Fort Park, Chesington and Legoland all shut. And it will be uh, online tickets only. Uh, and I do believe also they're reducing the capacity. I do believe Bolton Towers have reduced their capacity by 50%. So, yeah. Um, let's talk about the next one. Before leaving home, please check our website and social media pages. Uh, they always say that. But it's always good just in case you go to an attraction and, for example, say... Fort Park says they're reopening, but Alton Towers says they're still closed. Just got to make sure you know. Uh, next one, please be ready to make on-site payments using a contactless bank card rather than cash. This I'm seeing a lot of places do, such as shops, all sorts. Um, I know at Fort Park for the past few years, um, Finn's Bar and Grill, or what is now Infinity Bar and Grill, has been uh, contactless payments or card only for quite a while which can get annoying yeah uh, the face masks you know if if you have to wear one when going to the park feel you know follow the advice um, I know parks in America you can't enter the park without a mask on so yeah and then obviously Refrain from visiting an attraction if you display symptoms. Come on, don't be that stupid. 
Simple. Okay, moving on to the next uh, subject on here, which is on arrival at our attraction. So, number one, we have significantly reduced the daily ticketed capacity of our attraction to allow social distancing and the best possible guest experience. As I just said, I just mentioned that. Um, yeah. Arriving by car, we request that you follow all instructions regarding parking arrangements. I'm going to say this now, there's, there's going to be maybe trying to keep the two metre gap in the car parks. Okay. Uh, the next one is guests will notice new information signage informing them of key safety messages and instructions. Um, this is something I'm not surprised at. I can see maybe this being prominent in like the theme parks, but uh, maybe they might show key messages on um, the screen. Anyone who's done London Dungeon, uh, you know, in the waiting area, in the queue, there's some screens. Uh, they might show some stuff on there. And the next one, in addition to our employees undergoing daily non incentive or non incentive sorry, or temperature checks, we also might we might also require our guests to participate in such checks as a condition of entry. So pretty much saying is temperature check, if it comes back as a high temperature, you ain't getting in. Simple. Interesting one. Which is social distancing measures within our attraction. So start off with the first one which says we have arranged we have introduced new arrangements for the application of social distancing within queues. Clear markers and signage have been installed in our attraction, entry, ride, restroom and dining queue to help keep guests at a safe distance from one another. Our employees will monitor the queues to ensure that social distancing is being maintained. Now, before lockdown happened, I do know that Leatherland, Windsor and Chesington had started to enforce this. Um, so it would be good to see uh, places like Alton Towers and Fort Park take this on. And I think with Fort Park as well, Fort Park's going to be an interesting one to see if they can maintain that. One is we have introduced new arrangements for the application of social distancing in our dining areas. Tables and chairs are now being reconfigured to ensure enough distance between seated parties. In areas where strangers are seated together, seats will be removed or blocked to ensure that there is a suitable gap between guests. Now, I do remember uh, Chesington before lockdown enforcing this in a lot of their restaurants. So, it'll be interesting to see, I think, stuff like Legoland, Fork and Alton Towers take this on. Uh, next, which is a really interesting one, is we have developed custom plans for the application of social distancing on our rides and other attractions. In order to minimise contact between parties, strategies for separating guests include empty rows, leaving empty seats between guests and ride vehicles. Once again, before lockdown, uh, Chesington and Legoland have done this. Um, for example, on Vampire at Chesington, you'd have a row with people and then a row empty. Like that. And it was a really interesting way of doing it. Yes, it reduced capacity for the ride, but at least it's... I think it'll be interesting. I know quite a few YouTubers have said, oh, the for example, uh, Pleasure Beach Experience, they've said you can't social distance on a roller coaster. Clearly, if Merlin think you can, you can. Simple. Uh, and then the last one is guest viewing entertainment in the form of live shows or theatrical scenes will be separated from the performances and each other in accordance with social distancing requirements. Now, this is an interesting one because I'm going to bring up something, a subject which I think a lot of people are now starting to catch on to which is Darren Brown's ghost train. I can't see it reopening. I can't see it reopening after all this. Darren Brown's ghost train is not going to open this season. And then obviously, uh, social distancing continued on the next one. We have introduced new capacity limits for our indoor experiences and facilities. For example, shops, restaurants, theatres and guest service buildings. These restrictions will help ensure there is plenty of room for social distancing. Once again, sort of comes up with um, Darren Brown's ghost train. Installed new hygiene screens at many of our service counters and food stores that help physically separate guests from employees. 
a lot of shows and parks are doing, uh, no sorry, a lot of shops are doing this now. Uh, my local corner shop has only just started doing that. So yeah, next one, we have revised some of our standard operating protocols in order to reduce the proximity of our employees to guests. For example, this includes the way we now conduct security searches at admissions, how we perform height checks for our ride and undertake guest service activities. This, I reckon we're going to see new signage on rides, personally. And the next one is we have adapted or suspended some experiences and facilities to ensure that social distancing is suitably maintained. For example, the provision of costume character meet and greets, some games interactive play areas, or touch pools and props have been modified or suspended. Now this, I'm going to bring up Jungle Escape at Fort, at Fort Park. I can't see Jungle Escape returning this year, I know. I know I've done a video in the past where I said, oh, it might be getting scrapped. And then I've said, oh, it's probably going to come back with new scenes. By the looks of it on this plan, I don't think we're going to see, um, I don't think we're going to see Jungle Escape reopening. Another thing is uh, with Fright Nights, those who have done the escape room called Containment at Fort Park. I can't see Containment coming back either. And I'm going to be totally honest, Room on the Broom at Chesington. I know that's... It's... I'll tell you why I think Room on the Broom is going to change. There's going to be some huge changes to certain experiences. Um, I'm going to be releasing some videos over the next few weeks sort of talking about what changes could come to certain attractions such as Younger Escape if it was to operate and Room on the Broom. But for the time being, I'm putting this out there now. I don't think Jungle Escape at Fort Park is going to come back. Comment below your thoughts. And obviously this also means uh, Darren Brown's Ghost Train probably won't reopen either. Uh, the next one is hygiene and disinfection measures within our attraction. So first off, we have introduced enhanced cleaning measures for our day. We seek to disinfect high frequency touch points, such as the tables and chairs, Surface counters, grab and flush handles, ride restraint, door handles, plates, elevator buttons, and taps. So, this is just general cleaning stuff. Uh, we have introduced a large number of san uh, hygiene stations and hand sanitizer dispensers around the attraction for guests to use. Um, uh, before lockdown, Chessington had a lot of this. I don't know if Legoland did. Anyone who did Legoland before um, lockdown, let me know. But yeah, I. I, I I can take it, Olden Towers and everywhere else is going to come on to this. And the next one is, we have introduced PPE requirements for a range of activities that employee routinely perform. These include face mask, disposable gloves, eye protection and hand sanitizer. The use of such equipment and clothing by our employees is to both protect them and our guests. So just like shops and places, you're going to see a lot more people in masks. And obviously the last one is, we have introduced new deep cleaning measures in the event that a person presents themselves with symptoms consistent with COVID-19. We have introduced new menu offerings across many of our food outlets to place a greater emphasis on grab and go. Self-service buffets and salad bars have also been reconfigured to close, reconfigured or closed to reduce the number of high frequency touch points. Cutlery and condiments will now be provided to guess with their meal or on request rather than left in open areas. So I, I reckon restaurants that are going to see big changes in Merlin Parks are going to be the pizza and pasta places. Um, yeah. Uh, next one is, as with our employees, we politely request that all our guests uphold the highest possible hygiene standards, whether it be sneezing or coughing through the regular hand washing and the frequent application of hand sanitizer, common sense. And finally, our employees now participate in COVID-19 specific training programs instructing them how to keep safe as, as well as how to keep safe. And yeah, and just a final statement at the bottom is, we hope these new health and safety measures provide our guests with confidence and eagerness to visit one of our attractions. These are unprecedented time for all communities around the world, and whilst every effort is being taken to protect the safety and well-being of our guests, Everyone should inform themselves of the risks, condition and personal responsibilities before they visit. We thank you for your custom and understanding and let's make magical memories together.
So, what can we take from this? I'm happy that at least Merlin has told us what they're going to do. However, I know there's a lot of people wondering, oh, does this mean they're going to be opening up now? No. If anything, I cannot... If anything, I think the earliest we will see the theme parks open is maybe July. If that at the earliest. Latest, maybe September. I am going to be doing a video in a few days about the scare season and how that can go ahead. Or if it does go ahead, what changes will we see? I've said this now to so many people and I want to emphasise on this with Fort Park. Fright Nights is not going to happen. If anything, Fright Nights this year will just be late night rides and some roaming actors. We are not going to get any horror mazes. I know a good friend of mine, Life of Deals, recently did a Monk's Walk video and um, the Creek Freak Massacre sign is gone. Guys, if Fright Nights 2020 does not go ahead, don't start typing on your keyboards and having a go at Fort or any park that don't do Halloween events this year. Don't, you know, tweet them saying, oh, I hate you, you're not doing scare mazes this year. Just fucking grow a pair of balls because how are you going to social distance in a horror maze? It's not possible, okay? So like I say, throughout that's 2020 this year, we'll probably just be roaming actors and late night riding, all right? On that note, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, punch that subscribe button in the face. Let me know your uh, thoughts down below. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out and stay safe. Peace out, guys.